everybody this is green spirit back with another video today i will be doing the youtube 2017 pagan challenge uh questions five through eight and then question i believe it's number three in the 2016 pagan challenge so the first question i have it written down, written down so if i look down that's why I, i'm trying to read them it says, do you have any magical talents or psychic techniques which you consider your specialty? Um, as far as talents, um, I have a couple of the clair senses. Um, I am clairvoyant, which means I essentially see images in my mind's eye. Um, they could be uh, for the future, they could be from the past, they could be from, you know, something going on in the present. Um, I have always had this ever since I was a little girl. I don't have like full scenes, you know, nothing like Alyssa Milano on Charmed where she can see, you know, full like things happening. But I do have flashes of some images of what's going on and some insight. Um, I'm also... Um, I have prophetic dreams and I mean that doesn't happen a lot but when it does it usually happens in a sh in relatively short amount of time it's like a, a precursor a, a warning uh, I also have uh, the Claire scent so I can smell um, certain things so as I said before, my matron goddess is Our Lady of Guadalupe. And, and like I said in my previous video, I used to dream her all the time. And when I um, have come in contact with her and I feel she's around, I, I get a whiff of the smell of roses. Um, and I know she's, she's present. I smell roses. And that's actually her flower if you know any of her like mythology um i used to also smell my like my a campfire smell and i that's a smell that i associate with my grandfather who has passed uh i don't smell that anymore though um along he's he died when i was in about seventh grade um i'm 30 now i'm 30 years old but i was about seventh grade and we were really close and for a long time, like even like seven years after his death, if I ever talked about him, um, I would like immediately start crying just because I got overwhelmed by emotion. And I would like smell him, like smell that camp fiery smell. Um, so I always knew when he was around, but I had a, a dream about us being on a mountaintop and essentially saying goodbye. And after I had that dream, I never had dreams about him again. And I also um, never smelt him again. So I kind of feel like he officially, um, I mean, I think he'd always been crossed over. But I don't know if maybe he reincarnated or he just chose to not come around anymore. So that's um, another another of my senses um, I'm clairsentient which means I feel with my body um, when I get a strong uh, emotion I feel it physically I feel pressure and tingling on the back of my head I can get goosebumps um, cold or heat um, ringing in my ears um, nausea um, pressure on my chest usually like right here in my heart center uh, so those are the ones that I have um, I can't say that one of them is more developed than the other maybe the smell thing and then the clear um, sending with the feelings but I can't say that I'm more prone to one or the other I it's something that I'm working on now because I used to be really I was always very much like this when I was a kid, but it really freaked out my family and they didn't want me to have these things as being part of me. So 
um, I was very subdued for a really long time and so I am having to now like reteach myself or reopen myself to it so that's something I'm currently working on uh, the next question is what kind of divinations techniques do you prefer and do you record it in your book of shadows? Uh, some of the things that I enjoy, the top three that I probably use the most would be the pendulum. That has always worked extraordinarily well for me. The pendulum is a big one. I have, uh, I work with oracle cards and like if you look behind me I have a bunch of oracle cards. I do have a tarot deck and actually it's a relatively new tarot deck. Um, and I do get good readings on it, but I have to say that as beautiful as it is, I don't ever, I don't know, my interest in the tarot is not as strong as in other things, so maybe if I developed it more it would be better, but no, I'll probably re-gift those. I keep, re I keep buying tarot cards thinking that I'm going to use them and then I end up re-gifting them. So maybe if I get enough subscribers, I'll give them out to somebody. Uh, oh, and uh, my other one is my spirit board. And I'm sorry, give me just a second. I meant to pull this out for you. Just a moment. Sorry about that. Uh, so this is my spirit board. This is something I created myself, and I have I don't have the planter out right now, but uh, I have used this spirit board with really good success. Um, I made this myself and did all the artwork on it, and, the, uh, and I do have good success with the the spirit board but by far the most thing that I use would probably be the pendulum and the oracle cards next question uh, or oh, do I write it in my book of shadows so yesterday we did the book of shadows I didn't bring out another notebook I mentioned that I have tons of notebooks but I do have a particular notebook where I tend to it's kind of more like a journal and I just put that in my journal I don't necessarily put my results in my book of shadow shadows uh, charging let's see charging and consecrating tools which method works best for you so typically what I do is I create sacred space um, I then create holy water and then um, I sprinkle the item with the holy water and then I pass the items through a representation of each of the elements so for like earth um, I'd either have like sand or like soil like potting soil for water I would have water um, for air I would have like incense smoke or sage I use a lot of sage like this is uh, a sage my husband wild crafted for me. Um, and then for fire, like I would put it through um, a candle flame. Um, after that, I call upon the Lord and Lady to bless the item. And then myself, I hold the item. After all that, I hold the item. And then I close my eyes and I envision energy from my heart center from my heart chakra flowing through my body and into my hands and into the item and then I keep the intent in my head of the purpose of what I'm infusing the item with and then when I feel like it's it's glowing a golden light then I breathe um, sacred breath onto it to bring it to life 
And that sacred breath is essentially just all that pent up energy. I put it into uh, the item and then it's done. And obviously I say thank you. Um, so that's how I um, charge and consecrate tools. I will say I'll probably make a video on this, but I do make a lot of my own tools just because I I do buy things, but I really enjoy just the creative process of making your own things. So I do that. Uh, the next question is, where do you perform your rituals, holy sites, sacred spaces, and circle casting procedure? So I primarily do ritual here in my home. Um, I do it either in my living room or in my bedroom, depending on um, who's where. I have a little boy, <laughs> and and I have a husband, and sometimes although my husband might respect me doing ritual like in our bedroom my little boy will come in and out so usually what I do is I wait till everyone is either out of the house so it's like I do things in the morning or I wait till everyone's asleep and then I do things at night because that by far is the easiest thing for me um, I have done outdoor ritual um, by myself when it was mostly just my my husband and I and we would go like camping I have done rituals outside um, I used to live in an area as well that had um, a large pagan community and they had public outdoor ritual I have attended some of those but it, I never quite kind of it just felt very disjointed um, yeah just really disjointed and I can't say that I felt anything from doing ritual, public ritual outside. So that's what I do. Um, circle casting procedure. So I do um, create a circle and I do full rituals. So that's like, you know, calling quarters, invoking the goddess and the god, you know, full ritual when I do things like that. Um, as far as the circle, I do walk it, but I, I have kind of gone away from that. A lot of times I'll just sit down and in my mind's eye, I envision a circle coming up out of the ground and creating a sphere. When I do cast circle, uh, I don't cast circle just for my immediate radi uh, radius. I cast circle to encompass all of my house. Um, that's taken some practice, but I do do it. I essentially cover all of my area. And the reason I do that is because when I first started my practice, um, I, I read a lot of books in Wicca. And like I said, I don't. I consider myself kind of like an eclectic witch, but I do have Wiccan tendons to me. Um, and when I first started, it said, you know, you can't be coming in and out of circle because it weakens the circle. Well, I'd always forget something. Even if I planned it and was like trying to be meticulous, I'd always forget something. So the so now it's it's kind of stuck with me. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna practice until I can do a full circle around my house so that I can walk. Really, and then anyone who's in that in the room is protected as well. So I have a very flexible circle um, that encompasses all of my 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 home. So that is my circle casting procedure. And then the question for the 2016 uh, pagan challenge is: Do you have an altar? shrine or sacred space yes yes i do here it is um here i'll kind of pivot it a okay so i don't know if that was too fast <laughs> so this is my sacred space um i also have sometimes when i don't feel like working here i do have a small travel altar and shrine I have a video on that, but I think I'm going to remake the video because it was done on a really low quality camera and it's really shaky, so you might not be able to see it. But 
this is my space. It um, primarily just has, um, you know, things that I really like. And, and it does have all of the elements. And then I do have like a goddess, a lot of goddess imagery. But I, the thing that I have here for the god is, okay, so we were talking about outside ritual. Years ago, I was doing a ritual for uh, Beltane outside. My husband and I had gone camping just before my son. And I asked, I was looking around. I had brought some things, but I had forgotten like something for the gods. I was looking for like a pine cone or something that to me represented the god. And I was like foraging. And I said, dear god, please help me find, you know, the best item for my, my, my sacred space today that represents you. And right as I said that, I found the most perfect <laughs> pine cone set because it's in the shape of a phallic. It's just in the it's in the shape of a phallic symbol. So there it is. I know it's pretty funny, but um, I found this on Beltane uh, years ago. So I feel like you know this is the perfect representation for. Um, the god because I asked for it and he provided it so that's my um, sacred space so that's all the questions that I'm going to answer today um, I will try to get on here again tomorrow to try to catch up on the 2017 challenge and then I'll just do maybe a question a week from uh, from there on so thank you for watching Brightest blessings to all of you, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.